Good evening and welcome. My name is Susan Gadam and I am the custom, customer care manager here at Tarda. We are so glad that you joined us this evening as we host this virtual public meeting open to all Tarda and TARPS riders. As mandated by Title VI, we will be discussing changes that were made in the past year due to the coronavirus pandemic. Well, guiding us through this presentation tonight will be Sean Smith, TARDA's Development and Equity Officer. Attendees will be able to provide their questions in the Q&A box at any time during this presentation. And as a reminder, we are seeking feedback on the changes made in the past year due to COVID and we will prioritize those questions. This presentation is being recorded and any other questions that were presented that we couldn't get to will be answered on the TARDA website, which is www.tarda.com. So we have a great evening ahead of us. So let me turn this over to Sean. Thank you, Susan. Uh, good evening, my name is Sean Smith. I work as the Development and Equity Officer with TARDA. I will be presenting a review of the 2020 through 2021 major service changes. The Toledo Area Regional Transit Authority is required to ensure its transit service is available equally within the service area to minorities, non-minority residents, and individuals with low income. Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 prohibits any form of discrimination on the basis of age, race, or national origin. It also requires age transit agencies to analyze the potential effects of major service changes. Equity analyses are required regardless of whether proposed changes would be detrimental or beneficial to riders. Under normal circumstances, public involvement would be required prior to the start of any major service change. But due to the potential threat of COVID-19, transit agencies were permitted to make immediate and temporary changes. From the very beginning, we had no idea how long changes would need to be in place. Each agency was encouraged to make their judgment about how they could best follow CDC and FTA guidelines in order to keep their riders, drivers, and other staff safe. I have grouped these changes that occurred from March 2020 through April of this year into five categories for reporting. One, fare changes, two, express and limited route discontinuation, three, span of service and frequency reduction, four, spring 2021 emergency response service expansion, and five, the 10L extension. I will be presenting on those five today the full report with the data discussed in this presentation will be available on the TARDA website. Shown here is TARDA's current disparate impact and disproportionate burden policy. Should the impact of any major service change and or fare change require a minority population to bear adverse effects 20% or greater than those adverse effects borne by the non-minority population, that impact will be deemed a disparate impact. Should the burden of any major service change and or fare change require a low income population to bear adverse effects 20% or greater than those effects borne by the non-low income population, that impact would will be considered a disproportionate burden. Example one, if TARDA were to eliminate just Route 5, which has a minority rate of 74%, that would represent a disparate impact since the area average is 35%. This would exceed the 20% threshold by an additional 19%. Example two, 
If TARDA added three hours of daily service to all routes, this would not represent a disproportionate or disparate impact since it would affect all routes and riders in the same way. One aspect of Title VI also includes national origin. Spoken language and English proficiency are used as indicators for this category. So one additional part of the analysis includes monitoring the possible impacts of the changes. To improve access to information and updates, TARDA does offer some translation services, including over the phone translations, translated vital documents on the website for Chinese, Arabic, and Spanish speakers, and Google Translate on the website. In the 2010 census, Spanish was the most spoken non-English language. This is why we include Spanish translations on all of our timetables. In a 2019 writer survey, which includes, included a Spanish translation, 99% of the respondents indicated they spoke English very well and or well. TAR will continuously monitor public input to determine if significant impacts occurred. By eliminating fares, close proximity interactions between riders and drivers could be significantly reduced. The public was notified about these changes via news media, social media, bus operators, and the TARDA website. The fare elimination was implemented for all TARDA services simultaneously. This would affect all riders equally, so no disparate impact or disproportionate burden would occur. A disparate impact or disproportionate burden could have occurred for those who use extended passes. However, based on the 2019 survey results, minority riders and low-income riders use the various types of fare at near equal rates. By waiving all fare types rather than just cash, TARDA avoids disproportionately affecting those who are unbanked, lack credit cards, or lack access to locations for purchasing fare media in advance of a trip. With the discontinuation of express and limited routes, we analyzed the service provided by routes 29X, 35, 39, 39M, 41, 44X, and 47, 47X. Combined, these routes serve 43 census tracts. 10 of the served census tracts have a poverty rate above the service area average, but the overall poverty rate for all of the tracts served is 14.8%. 16 of the service served census tracts have a minority rate above the service area average, but the overall minority rate for all of the tracts served is 24.4%. Both rates are far below the area average. These service changes would not disproportionately affect minority or low income populations, so Title VI remediation is not needed. Due to the COVID, due to COVID-19, all routes experienced some degree of service reduction. TARDA's immediate emergency response mirrored the regular Saturday service, so the fixed routes that <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> so for fixed routes, the actual Saturday service was unchanged. The initial degree of change was directly related to the difference in service between the weekday and the weekend. Outside of route elimination, the biggest changes occurred to subroutes 17B, 20M, 27N, 28B, and 32R. These ranked 64 to 69% change on the weekday. These five subroutes serve 59 census tracts combined with an average low income rate of 24.6% and a minority rate of 43.8%. The low income rate is nearly equal to that of the service area as a whole and the minority rate is about 9% above the service area average, which is below TARDIS threshold for disparate impact. No immediate mitigation is required. 
However, TARDA will continue to restore service as vaccination rates increase and as the impacts of COVID are lessened. Additionally, in the next section for spring 2021 emergency service expansion, I will go over added service that addresses some mitigation efforts. Routes 2, 5, 19, and 31 core services were added this last spring and they run every 30 minutes. This provides additional service to major service areas, including Promedica Toledo Hospital, UT Transit Center, Mercy St. Vincent Medical Center, and UT Science Campus. The core service increase takes place over 35 census tracts. The poverty rate for these tracts combined is 31.57%, and the minority rate is 54.89%. Both rates are well above the average for the TARDA service area. Based on this data, we believe the service changes could benefit minority and low-income populations with greater access to various resources. The changes covered in the next two slides for Route 19 and Routes 12 and 14 did not have their overall routing change but instead have the frequency modified. Those details can be found in the Span of Service and Frequency Reduction Title VI report. 19 was modified, so the branches 19S and 19T would still be served by a loop service renamed 51 and 52, shown in the image on the right. The branch sections of 19S and 19T was replaced by 52 and runs every hour rather than every three hours, which was the initial COVID response. The branch section of 19T, which was not covered by 52, was replaced with Route 51 and also runs every hour rather than just once a day. 19F was considered the main trunk. This became designated as just Route 19 and runs every hour. As an initial response to COVID, routes 12 and 14 were merged and just referred to as Route 12 and run every 90 minutes. This was the normal Saturday service pre-COVID. With this service change, the routes were divided again. Each route now runs every hour. The increase in service to routes 2, 5, 12, 14, 19, and 31 will affect a population with a minority rate of 32% and a poverty rate of 22%. Both are slightly below the average for the service area. However, with the 30 minute frequency increase for the core service area, there will be a greater benefit to areas with higher minority rates and higher poverty rates overall. Routes two, five and 31 at extensions added to primarily provide additional access to Promedica Flower Hospital, McLaren St. Luke Hospital, and Promedica Physician General Surgery. The extensions primarily fall on census tracts with much lower percentages of minority and low income individuals. The rate of poverty for these tracts is 6.7% and the minority rate for these tracts is 8.9%. However, these additions provide access to medical resources to those who have access to the whole route. In combination with the regular routes, the low income rate is 21.2% and the minority rate is 33.9%, which are both only slightly under the area average. Prior to COVID-19, on a weekday, the 10L provided one outbound trip and one inbound trip from downtown to Lime City and Schreier, about 12.84 miles. After the 10 call a ride was canceled, the 10L was modified to cover the popular on-demand stops all the way down to the Rossford Meyer, and the frequency was increased. The current 10L total length is about 25.05 miles, with nine outbound nine inbound trips totaling 225.25 total revenue vehicle miles. 
This is a 1,654% increase. Based on the census data, the expansion could provide a disproportionate benefit to the non-minority and higher income populations. This route modification provides service to a greater portion of the Rossford jurisdiction. The only other fixed line for Rossford is Route 14, which travels less than one mile in North Rossford. An additional benefit of the extension is that the new 10L provides greater access to major Rossford employers, such as Meyer and Amazon via the Tarta Hub lineup. Increase in frequency will likely occur as Tarta transitions to post-COVID-19 emergency service. These frequency increases will occur across multiple routes, so disparate and disproportionate effects will be minimized. TARTA will be accepting public comments about all these service modifications that occurred since March 20, 2020. All comments must be received by 5 p.m. on Wednesday, July 28, 2021, to be included as part of the official record. These comments will be shared with the board and will be used to improve service going forward. Crystal. Are, are there any questions that I may be able to answer at this time? Thank you, Sean, and good evening, everyone. My name is Crystal Freyer, and I am the Communications and Marketing Specialist at TARDA. I will be facilitating the Q&A portion of tonight's meeting, and we will give everyone a few minutes to submit feedback and questions they have regarding the presentation in the Q&A box. Please keep in mind we are seeking feedback on the changes made in the past year due to COVID-19 and we'll prioritize those questions first. All righty. Uh, to begin, we have a question for Sean. Uh, what is Title VI? Uh, yeah, Title VI uh, is a section of the Civil Rights Act which states that any programs or activities receiving that would receive federal assistance uh, they cannot discriminate on the basis of race, color, or national origin. Uh, it's the goal that the transit services are provided in a non-discriminatory non manner. Um, environmental justice also accompanies Title VI uh, and is applied to prevent minority communities and low-income communities from being adversely affected. Uh, as an FTA grantee, TARDA is responsible for having a Title VI program which includes policies and procedures to address, avoid, and mitigate any discriminatory actions. Uh, part of that program includes the analysis process and public engagement, um, and the, the complete program can be found on TARDA's web webpage. Excellent. Um, we have another question asking, compared to other Ohio transit agencies, how quickly did TARDA respond to COVID-19? Uh, TARDA was quick to respond uh, with mass requirements, social distancing, uh, they reduced rider limits per vehicle uh, and service changes in the fare eliminations, which all occurred around March 20th, 2020. Uh, it, it made it one of the first transit agencies uh, to take this drastic of measures against COVID. Awesome. Uh, we do have a question from Jessica. She's wanting to know, how is TARDA making up for revenue loss? through not collecting fares during COVID-19? Um, well, most transit agencies have been very lucky. Uh, the Congress and FTA um, have made a significant number of funds available. Uh, initially, we were running off of the CARES Act. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head uh, how much money it provided. Um, but after that, there was the CRISPR Act. And then this most recent one this year is the American Rescue Plan. Um, these three uh, acts um, have provided a significant amount of funding to cover operational expenses, including keeping all of our drivers employed um, so that we could, if, when time came, we could get everything running back to normal without having to restart any hiring processes. Awesome. Another question coming in is, how has ridership changed due to major service changes? Obviously, ridership took a major dip um, after March, uh, but as we pr provided service to essential workers, the numbers grew uh, in the summer once those stay-at-home orders started to release. 
uh, and then they peaked in autumn. A seasonal reduction in ridership occurred in the winter, but this is it, this is typical. And uh, this spring, after the last major service change introducing the core service, the ridership numbers did climb again. Um, by May, the average weekday ridership for fixed route was over uh, 2,200. Uh, Caller ride was about 20, and tarps was just under 700. And Sean, another question for you is, what precautions were taken by TARDA to keep riders safe during COVID-19? Uh, the mass requirements of, were put in place in order to follow the CDC and TSA guidelines, uh, as well as social distancing. Um, those who rode, you may have noticed that we a lot of our routes had two buses. This was to accommodate those capacity limits that we had on our, on our buses. Um, we also did close the hub um, and there was the fare elimination. Excellent. Well, thank you everyone so much for putting in your questions in our Q&A box. I'm seeing quite a few of you participate, which is awesome. If that does conclude all of the questions from the past year of service, we will go on to answer some additional questions that were submitted for tonight's meeting. So I am seeing several questions from our audience regarding service changes, fares, and hours of service for TARDA fixed line services and TARPs. So regarding service changes, there is a summer schedule planned um, that will resume some earlier and later runs. We will be announcing those details very soon. We also encourage the community to join us in these meetings and surveys this summer as we start to redesign TARDA's system and service for the future. We will also remain fare free throughout the summer, which offers a great opportunity for our riders to explore and connect with local events, meal sites, libraries, and more. When we do decide to go back to fairs, we will give plenty of notice to the public as to how and when that will take effect. Um, we will now answer some additional questions that were submitted prior to this evening's meeting. So the first one that comes in is, master still a requirement on public transit. I have noticed that drivers for the cab companies that contract with TARPs have not been wearing masks that last, and the last few weeks. What is the rule about masks and cabs? So this is a really, really great question. Thank you so much for bringing this to our attention. Cab companies should be following the same TSA guidance on face masks that other mass transit companies are following. So we will reach out to our cab company partners to remind them of this requirement. Um, another question that we had is, what is the status of the comprehensive operational analysis and what time frame do you anticipate for seeking public feedback? So the comprehensive operational analysis is going to be a complete redesign of TARDIS system and services. The goals in this analysis are to provide better connections and options as well as grow ridership. So it will take approximately a year to complete. The community input for this will begin this summer and we encourage everyone to be involved and provide your ideas. Uh, we also have another question. Uh, what is the best way to make sure of receiving updates from TARDA? And how do you si sign up to receive email updates? So updates can always be found on our website at www.tarda.com. Our robust social media platforms, which include Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn our text alert programs, and our email newsletters. Writer text alerts can be received by um, texting the word TARDA, all capital letters, to 41411 from your mobile phone or by signing up on our website. You can also sign up for our email newsletter at TARDA.com. There is a pop-up registration form that pops up right when you visit the site. So that's a really great way to keep in contact with us and keep updated on all of our upcoming changes. And it looks like our last question that was submitted was, will TARDA ever again provide late night service for specifically for routes 12 and 14 for those of us who work third shift? It was very convenient to take the 9 p.m. bus to work rather than drive every night. So will late night service at least until 9 p.m. ever return for the needs of third shift workers and others? 
This is a wonderful question. Um, at this time, TARDA does not have enough funding to provide late night service, yet we realize that this is a growing need for our customers and employers. So that is why TARDA is working on securing another funding source. As for service until 9 p.m., there is a summer schedule that um, was mentioned before that we are have planned and that will resume some earlier and later runs. So we'll be announcing those details very, very soon. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the Q&A box. Um, if you have any last minute questions, please go ahead and submit them now. All right. Well, thank you everyone for participating in the Q&A. That is all the time we have. However, the questions and answers from tonight's meeting, those we were not able to get to, and TARDA's full Title VI report will be available in the following week at www.tarda.com. We will also be announcing that summer, those summer schedule updates in the near future, so please stay tuned online through our writer text alert system and social media for updates regarding summer service. And at this point, I will turn it over to Susan to close our meeting. Susan. Thank you so much. And I wanna say that these were great questions. Thank you very much. As we wrap up tonight's program, please make sure to take our post event survey that will be available when you leave the meeting. And for those of you that may have just called in, you're going to receive that survey by email. Your feedback is so important to us. It helps us to continue providing valuable events and programs for the community to learn more about public transit and more about TARDA. So we plan to have the recording of this meeting available on the TARDA website in the coming week. So finally, thank you to all of our meeting attendees for joining us this evening. We encourage that you stay engaged with TARDA with your involvement and support, we're not just talking about making and building great, innovative public transit in the Toledo region. We can actually make that happen. So good night and thank you very much.